All right, good morning. We will go ahead and get started. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, we are going to be talking about hazard communication. My name is Natalie Gupton. I will be your presenter today. I am the Vice President and Chief Operating Officer at AgSafe. I am located in Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, however, most of you are familiar with AgSafe. We are based in Modesto, California. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. Um, our contact information, mine's on the screen. Um, you can check out our website at agsafe.org. And of course, we encourage you to follow us on social media. Um, we provide lots of updates and information through that as well. Should you have any questions, use that chat feature um, to, to um, send any messages. Uh, I sent you a good morning message. Um, so that's how you access that. So quick disclaimer, I'll give you a, just a moment to review that and then we will dive in. Okay, so today we are going to be talking about hazard communication and specifically the hazard communication standard. Um, so again, um, we are, uh, this webinar is from the federal perspective, um, so please take note of that. Um, depending on what state you are located, you may have some variations of this standard. However, it's um, pretty universal across the United States. So what is OSHA standard for hazard communication? So this, the regulation or the standard can be found in 29 CFR 1910, which dignifies that that's general industry, um, 0.1200 specifically in H, um, requires all employers to provide information and training to their employees about the hazardous chemicals to which they may be exposed to at the time of their initial assignment and whenever a new hazard is introduced into the workplace. So um, you have to provide uh, communications and training on the hazard hazardous chemicals that would be found in your workplace, you know, whether that's the farm, whether you're a cooling facility, or whether you're manufacturing, the standard applies across the board that you must provide the proper communications to your employees about the hazardous chemicals that will be present in their workspace. So there, and again, take note, there are 25 states, including Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands, that have OSHA approved state plans, and meaning that they have adopted their own standards and enforcement practices. But for the most part, the states adopt their standards that are identical to federal OSHA. Again, some states have adopted different standards applicable to this topic and may have different enforcement policies. So please take note, um, depending on what state you're in, this may vary slightly. Okay, hazardous chemicals can be a little, little ambiguous. So what exactly or what are some examples of hazardous chemicals? So this could be uh, paints, cleaning chemicals, degreasers, detergents, gas cylinders, um, refrigerant gases. Um, you know, some of you that um, are cleaning uh, fruits and vegetables prior to processing, some of those detergents could be considered um, hazardous um, chemicals or the things that you're using to sanitize. Again, um, verifying whether or not that those are classified as hazardous or not. Um, 
most often in farming environment, we all have some shops, um, depending on Again, the types of things that you're using, an aerosol spray may be considered a hazardous chemical, um, oils um, that you're using for different machines could be considered um, hazardous, as well as, um, you know, if you're a cooling facility, ammonia, and there's additional training for that. But again, uh, being aware of what could be classified as a hazardous chemical, and if you have any of these present, then you need to provide hazard communication training as well as having a hazard communication plan. Now in agriculture, like, so what, how does this apply to pesticides? Is it applicable? How do I merge these together? In agriculture, yes, we do use pesticides on a regular basis. And so with pesticides, you do have separate training, um, particularly the worker protection standard. Um, you need to apply this, you need to have um, done and trained in your uh, farming operation. So not necessarily falling within um, hazard communications, but, the trainings that you do have um, for pesticides and hazardous chemicals are similar, but they are separate. Um, the main similarity that you'll have in these two different trainings are reviewing the uh, SDS sheets um, with that are specific to the pesticides you're using. However, um, take note in your hazard communication program and inventory should not include your pesticides. Hazard communication programs. Some tips here. Um, it doesn't have to be long and complex. It just needs to be the co compliance um, pieces. Um, you need to have a written program. So at AgSafe, if it's not written down, it didn't happen. Um, so you may have a plan or a program, but if it's not documented, then it it's same as doesn't exist. So you need to have this written down. Um, and distributed throughout your organization that employees are aware and have been trained on it. But again, you need to have a physically written hazard communications program. Within that program, you need to discuss how chemicals are going to be labeled and stored. So with the labeling, we'll go through what those standards are and what need to be on that label. Um, typically, if you're using what came from the manufacturer, that is typically enough. Um, but again, in, in that written plan, it can be very simple and straightforward, but talking about how um, those um, chemicals are labeled and stored within your organization. Where are the safety data sheets are kept? So you need to discuss that in your written plan, document where those are stored. Um, again, we're gonna talk, they're called safety data sheets, but often they're referred to as SDS. Is. <laughs> and then finally, training details. In your written program, um, how are you training? When did you train? Um, documenting training as such um, in your hazard communications program. So what, what else needs to be included in this? So you need to become familiar with OSHA standard. So actually just talking about the standard, reading that standard to employees and going over that. Uh, very simple and straightforward about what the OSHA standard is about. Second, identify who is responsible for the program and implementation. You may have different people that are responsible for different departments. You may have somebody that is um, responsible for the overall program, but have somebody responsible for the training. You can have a variety of people involved. Regardless, you need to have them identified and documented in your hazard communication program. Third, prepare a list or an inventory of all hazardous chemicals. Seems pretty obvious and straightforward. <laughs> um, however, um, 
this sometimes this piece is missing, but having a, a complete list of everything that you have present on your farm, on your operation is important because how are you going to have all the other necessary pieces to meet the standard if you don't know everything that you have present? Again, having that list and inventory, again, going back to bullet two, who's responsible for the program and the implementation, have that documented, who's doing the inventory, how often are they doing it, who's keeping track, having that um, designated is important. Ensure labels are compliant. Again, if they're coming from the manufacturer, you're pretty safe to assume that they are uh, compliant, but doing a quick inventory and review of those um, just to ensure that all of the standards are met. Um, but again, ensuring that labels are compliant, we'll go over the label quickly here in just a second. Maintain safety data sheets. Again, those are the SDSs. These are the um, complete pieces of information that you need to safely and adequately, adequately use a chemical properly. Finally, train, train, train. Again, what referring to your inventory list, referring to your labels and your safety data sheets, you need to train on the chemicals that you're using on a regular basis and have present on your operation. And then evaluate program periodically. Again, this goes hand in hand with that uh, list and inventory, ensuring that you are training on all those that are present, um, ensuring that um, your training program is compliant, um, is meeting all the needs that you need in your operation to be in compliant and to properly and safely use hazardous chemicals on your farm. Training, we touched this on this briefly, but there are two times in which you need to conduct training. First is on initial assignment. When that employee is hired, actually you can technically say three, but when that employee is hired, you need to conduct the training. If that employee is reassigned to a different area, they may need a, a new training or additional training. And they also need to be trained when new hazards are introduced. So you're bringing in a new chemical, um, a new product to be used in your operation, then you need to provide training on that specific chemical. Or if you've changed any, anything in your hazard communications program, you need to provide another, another training just to ensure all your bases are covered. In your training, you must go over the standard, you need to go over the hazards of chemicals, go over the appropriate protective measures and where to obtain additional information. And again, we encourage you um, when conducting your training on the chemicals that are in your operation, use the resources that you have in front of you and available, it's straightforward, use your labels and use your safety data sheets. Um, and, and those are important um, to ensure you pay attention to, that those employees understand how to read those, where to find them, and how to use them. Labels. So on a label, there are three or four different versions to a degree, and it varies in complexity, but um, they're very standard and must contain specific information. And so this is the name and address and telephone number of the manufacturer, the product identifier, the signal word, hazard statements, precautionary statements, and the pictogram. So the label provides information to workers on the specific hazardous chemicals that they're looking at. Um, while labels provide important information for anyone who handles, uses, stores, or transports hazardous chemicals, 
labels are limited in the information they provide. So again, this is the first line of information and the SDSs are the second, and that's where they can receive more information. Um, the SDSs or safety data sheets, which accompany hazardous chemicals are the more complete resource for details regarding hazardous chemicals. Um, the revised statements and pictograms, name, address, telephone number of the manufacturer and other responsible parties are included on um, the safety data sheets. So here is an example. So this is a simple label. There are a few that have a bit more information than you see here, but this one um, is pretty simple and very straightforward. So first of all, um, all the information that is required for a label is present here. So first you see that identifier. So what am I using? What is the name of this chemical? You see that there, it's the HS85 batch number as well. Second, you see the pictogram. Now with the pictogram, realize these are universal. And this came with the revision of the hazard communication standard and are um, universal across anyone that um, complies with uh, hazard communication, as well as um, the globally harmonized system of classified and labeling of chemicals or known as GHS. And so that's really brought about the revised version of the communication standard. Next is the hazard statement. So the hazard statement describes the nature of the hazards of that particular chemical that's included with this label. Um, for example, um, the hazard statement could say causes damage to kidneys through prolonged or repeated exposure when absorbed through the skin. Here you see harmful if swallowed. Um, again, very straightforward. Next, you'll see a signal word. Um, so this is often, it's uh, very simple, just one word. It could be danger, warning, or caution. And these are tiered uh, according to the toxicity of the product. Um, and so it alerts the reader to a potential hazard on the label. Um, actually, caution is not, I'm thinking about uh, pesticides. So within hazardous chemicals, there are only two words used as signal words. It's danger and warning. So within a specific hazard class of danger is used when the more severe hazards and warning is when there's less severe hazards. And there will be only one signal word on the label, no matter how many hazards a chemical may have. If one of the hazards warrants a danger signal word and other warrants a signal word of warning, then only danger will be used. And so you'll see that signal word right below that pictogram. Next is the precautionary statement. So this also includes your first aid information. Um, so the precautionary statement describes describe recommended measures that should be taken to minimize or prevent adverse effects resulting from exposure of this particular chemical. Uh, as well as hazards of improper storage or handling. So there are actually four types of precautionary statements, which are prevention, response, storage and disposal. So here you just see um, the response versus um, the other two. Again, mentioning that this is a more simplified version of the label, but yet still in compliance. And then here you can see um, the manufacturer information, the name, address, and phone number. So 
So here is um, the, an example of the different pictograms and it, it is a little bit smaller, but I think um, you're probably familiar with most of these. Um, but the, again, these are universal and um, related to the GHS. Um, OSHA has a ton of information available online. Um, always encourage you to work smarter, not harder. Um, and, and OSHA does have a ton of resources that you can use for free. Um, they have this particular card. Now I've downsized um, this graphic to fit on the PowerPoint slide. Um, so it's much more readable if you go and to their website and download it yourself. Um, and they have English and Spanish available. Um, having this um, in your training, suggest using anything available through OSHA, um, ensuring that you know, they are compliant because it's coming from the regulatory agency themselves. So a little bit more about safety data sheets. Again, again, this is something that you need to include in your training program. Um, with a safety data sheet, it's the more complete information about the hazardous chemicals you do you are using. Um, SESs should be presented using the following 16 headings in order given below. So all of these uh, 16 topics are going to be present on an SDS. So identification, hazards or hazard identification, composition information of the ingredients, first aid measures, firefighting measures, accidental release measures, handling and storage, exposure controls and personal protection. So again, this is extremely important. All the information is extremely important, but again, digging in, um, ensuring that you have the right personal protective equipment for the chemicals you are using and finding that information here on the safety data sheets. Physical and chemical properties, stability and reactivity, toxicological information, ecological disposal considerations, transport information, regulatory information, and if there's any other applicable pieces of information also included on the safety data sheet. Now, depending on the type of job that um, individuals are doing, you may or may not have to go over all 16 pieces of a safety data sheet. An um, individual may never transport or um, dispose of a, a chemical, then you may only need to go over some certain pieces of the safety data sheet in depth, like first aid measures, um, going over what are those hazards and how to properly handle and store as well as that personal protective equipment. Again, there, there is a difference between an individual being exposed, they're around when these chemicals are used and when they're actually using it. So ensuring your training reflects those differences. Again, work smarter, not harder. Um, so there are a variety of templates out there beauty of the internet we have at our hands these days. Um, here are two links for two templates that you can use um, that it gives you a great base plan so you can fill in all the information. You can just use this as a starting point and, and make it your own um, or you can just plug in your own information. Um, but there are one, there's one um, at OSHA.gov as well as a one from a specific state, um, particularly in North Carolina. So these are two great sample plans that you can use and model yours from, but ensuring that you have all those pieces that are required for compliance for your hazard communications plan or program. Next, we are all about giving you great resources. And again, I, I got these from OSHA. They're uh, great resources. You know they're in compliance because they came from the agency themselves. Um, so there's a great overview on the website of hazard communication where you can access a variety of resources. 
which um, I've only provided a couple here, but there are many more um, that may be more applicable to your operation that I did not provide. Um, they have downloaded pictograms. So you can go in and have a high quality uh, picture um, and can use that in your hazard communications trainings, your programs. Um, if you choose to make your own labels, having that available as well. Um, but ensure you are in compliance if you decide to make your own labels and standardize those in your operation. There is um, some great training resources on the safety data sheet. There's a quick card as well as an overview of um, overview uh, of safety data sheets and going in detail about all those 16 uh, pieces that I just discussed on the previous slides. And then um, though this is from the federal perspective, I know many of you are based there in California. Um, the California hazard communication uh, regulation is just a teeny tiny bit different. There's only a couple of things uh, that are uh, a little different in the state of California. And so there is a regulation guide there that you can access to verify um, those differences. But again, encourage you to take advantage of the resources that are already out there um, and incorporate those into your trainings. Um, Take an opportunity to review your hazard communications program if you have one in place. If you do not, please do that soon um, as it is required um, for compliance. No matter what state you're in, you need to have a hazard communications program. And so with that, um, does anybody have any questions? Uh, I know it ended a couple seconds early, but uh, available for any questions um, about uh, hazard communication program. Um, what I am waiting, if uh, anybody would needs to reach out to us, our email address, which I realize is not on the slide, I will type that into the chat feature is safeinfo at agsafe.org. Um, and then if you need to reach out to me directly, I am at natalie at agsafe.org. And this is a free webinar that we do monthly. We will um, have another webinar the second Tuesday of December. And I apologize, I don't know the topic off the top of my head, but um, again, focus on uh, safety and compliance um, in agriculture from the federal standpoint. Well, I will stay on just a couple more moments uh, just to make sure I don't have any questions, but thank you so much for joining us today, and I hope you have a wonderful and safe day.